Hello, everybody. My name is Minami Osbjornsson, as you already heard, and I am a senior here at HPA, and I will be speaking to you about antibiotic resistance, its definition, and why it is so important in our world. To preface, a part of the reason as to why I wanted to speak about antibiotic resistance is because I'm currently researching resistance to a certain antibiotic, tetracycline, in HPA soil bacteria. When I was younger, growing up in a family who strongly supports science, including three strong female nurses in my mom's side of the family, I could not comprehend the fact that there might be a limit to the work and possibilities of medicine. All I knew is that when my mom gave me something to take, it immediately healed my discomfort. Many scientists and researchers still do not believe a limit to the capabilities of science, but for me, my belief went much further basically to a point in which I had a blind trust in this subject. So it wasn't an aspirational trust where I knew that somehow there would be someone in the future that can cure all of our problems, but I thought that medicine and science could do no wrong against the human race, and that as a society, we are only improving. Bioethics went straight over my head. Science and medicine are so incredibly innovative in progress, but I could not see past that disillusioned, idealistic idea. And just to say to everyone, before I go into details about antibiotic resistance, I don't want you to be here and have you lose all of your faith in medicine, the medical industries, or in science. But I want you all to walk away with a better understanding of how antibiotics function in the world we live in today. So that despite how complicated the science seems, you can make more informed decisions and on how antibiotics may show up in your life and what effect they could have if not handled properly especially in a world where they are so often handled improperly and with no regard to the science. So what is antibiotic resistance? Antibiotics, firstly, are what kill bacteria, simply. If you remember from your biology class the concept of natural selection or survival of the fittest, where certain traits persist and permeate through generations due to a preference for them, exists. In the presence of antibiotics, however, bacteria that have a genomic mutation coding for a certain resistance or ability to survive against the antibiotic are selected for, then are later able to create more of that resistance coding genome in other bacteria. Simply said, bacteria who can survive against antibiotics survive and make children who can do the same. Great for bacteria, bad for us. Suddenly, the medicine that I used to have so much hope for no longer works. Unless, however, we stop using antibiotics for a while because it is proven that resistance coding genes generally cost the bacteria its fitness and those would be outcompeted by the non-resistant bacteria in the lack of an antimicrobial pressure. Yet, as you could probably figure, a hypothetical lack of antibiotics in all medical scenarios is pretty unrealistic and brings its own problems. After all, the reason why this is such a large problem is because of how important they are. But still, why do we care so much? What is the actual scope of this problem? While these colonies of bacteria developing strength against our treatments do so much harm to us now, only to do even worse to us tomorrow. Right now, according to the CDC, drug-resistant diseases kill 35,000 a year at least, and the UN Ad Hoc Coordinating Group on Microbial Resistance antimicrobial resistance reported that they predict that by 2050, drug-resistant diseases could cause up to 10 million deaths annually if no more precautions are taken. In addition to the deaths, the threat of antibiotic resistance on the economy is also great. It is estimated that 24 million people will be pushed into poverty due to the rising costs of antibiotics and the antibiotic innovation that would need to occur if our current prescriptions no longer act efficiently. And these are incredibly scary statistics. In my scientific research here at HPA, though, I've amplified the bacterial DNA of certain soil samples taken from the garden here, and I found that in each of my three samples, there, are, there was at least one form of tetracycline antibiotic resistance. Two in two of my samples, and that is only the baseline of it all. So we know that this is a problem at HPA, and we know for certain that this problem isn't one of only places outside of our home. Now we need to start paying attention. We don't know how dangerous it is for anyone right now for many reasons, mainly because other than the identification of res resistant bacteria, I haven't figured out exactly which bacteria this resistance correlates to, nor the frequency of it. 
Still, though, we know that it is worth it for us to invest more time and research into this subject here in HPA and further in other parts of Hawaii Island. So what can we do as normal people to decrease the predicted effects of antibiotic resistance? Why did I just throw all these scary statistics at you and have not said anything about how to fix it yet? But anyways, these are a few pro tips. If you are prescribed antibiotics for an infection of some sort, do not ignore them. Don't let my talk scare you into ignoring your prescription, but please take the entire course of your prescription so as to not breed that resistant pool of bacteria. Don't only take some and then think that that is enough to kill because that'll kill some of them and then leave actually the fitter to survive and then that will keep multiplying. So please take your entire course of your prescription. Um, pay close attention to the ingredients of the pesticides that you use if you use them. Avoid ingredients like oxytetracycline. That is one of the antibiotics that I researched and we see resistance of that in many, many different agricultural settings. Again, and then buy less antibiotic treated animal products. Even though I have been talking mainly about pesticide use right now and medicine, a lot of the time livestock industries use tetracyclines and many other antibiotics to treat their livestock. However, um, antibiotics are used as the prevention rather than the treatment of an infection, and this causes antibiotic resistance with the consistent overuse. It allows for the livestock's guts and their manure to harbor communities of bacteria with multi-drug resistant pathogens. In many farm animals, antibiotics are honestly just a band-aid solution to keep the crowded high risk of disease in living conditions at a low in terms of disease. A key aspect of practicing conscientious antibiotic consumption or antibiotic stewardship is either to stop this practice if you are part of the problem or to stop buying from the major corporations that do this. If you utilize manure as fertilizer, make sure that it is not um, treated with antibiotics. If you own livestock in a farm, do not consistently treat livestock with antibiotics in the prevention of a disease or infection. Only use it in treating a problem that begins to occur. Not only is this more economical for you, but it allows for you to practice antibiotic stewardship. And I want you to know that at the end of this talk that no matter who you are, please understand that no one is helpless in lessening the future implications of antibiotic overuse and abuse. You will always have some sort of autonomy in how you understand and behave in the presence of different safety risks for not only yourself, but for the people in the future. Thank you for listening.